Okay, so the last hypersensitivity is type 4. The major difference between this and the others are that it's not antibody mediated, but cell mediated, so it's mainly cell cellular involvement. And duration is also a bit different, this one usually takes 2 to 3 days. There are two major types, the delayed type and the T cell mediated direct cytotoxicity. So let's start with the delayed uh, type and in this one we'll take uh, tuberculosis as an example. So let's assume that you are exposed to mycobacterium tuberculosis by air or if it's secondary to AIDS. Then your respiratory alveolar macrophages will uh, digest those bacteria and um, then go and differentiate into Th1 which will be by interleukin 12 that you see right here. This is the major differentiation factor in interleukin-12 that will convert the naive T helper cell into Th1. And you remember the previous steps, the, the T cell receptor will bind to the antigen while the MHC2 will bind to the CD4 molecule and with the co-stimulation of B7 to CD28. So once you have differentiated into Th1 with help of interleukin-12, the interferon gamma will now downregulate Th2. And uh, the other factors that will play a major role are interleukin-2 and tumor necrotic factor. Interleukin-2 is necessary for colonial expansion, meaning that there will be an autocrine reaction in which the T helper cells will proliferate and make multiple copies of themselves for preparation of a second exposure or eliminating all the other uh, tuberculosis uh, affected cells. The interferon gamma we'll talk about later, but to, so after uh, this help of interleukin-2, you will have now multiple uh, copies of these uh, Th1 cells that will go and circulate throughout your uh, lymphatic system and your circular system and be prepared no matter where the exposure, second exposure will be at. But if it fails to kill uh, for, during the first time this bacteria completely, in a second exposure, your Th1 molecules, will, which are now very synthesized to mycobacterium tuberculosis, will start to uh, release loads of gamma interferon, the one you see right here. And this one will work a little bit like a chemotactic agent that will call on monocytes from your circulation. And by calling on monocytes, it will also help them to differentiate into macrophages. And the closer they get to the affected area where the Th1 is found, the more differentiated they will get. And eventually the macrophages will become specialized. And their nucleus will get a similar shape and actually the whole cell will get a similar shape to an epithelial cell and therefore we call them now epitheloid cell or it refers to resembling which will now surround in a circular fashion the th1 cells and also at the same time you the tumor necrotic factor will induce uh, further inflammation and as well the T cells will gather now around this area. So like you see right here. By this surrounding with the centralized Th1 synthesized cell surrounded by epithelioid cells and T cells, you will form something called a granuloma. Sometimes the epithelioid cells can gather together to form a multinuclear uh, structure called multinucleated giant cells of Langerhans. The location of uh, the granuloma can be different and we tend to give them different uh, terminologies depending where they are in relation to the lungs. For instance, we have something called a GANS focus. A GANS focus is when you have the, when, uh, the granuloma is in the interlobar fissure in the upper uh, essentially in the upper part of a lower lobe and vice versa but if it managed to get uh, close to your lymph nodes close to your uh, lungs uh, for instance mediastinal bronchomediastinal and so on then you will call it a gans complex but if you get rid of your tuberculosis the f first time and you're re-exposed then it will usually get uh, on both or one of your lung 
apex, so on the top of your lungs. It chooses that site mainly because there is essentially more oxygen there. Eventually, as your macrophages now release a lot of their molecules such as oxygen-derived free radicals and other proteolytic enzymes, they will destroy this uh, Th1 uh, synthesized granuloma, so they will destroy this antigen and the bacillus itself, but they will manage to damage a lot of the tissue at the same time. And because of this damage, the tissue will become quite ischemic and eventually necrotic. And this type of necrosis is called caseous necrosis. Granuloma is not always associated with caseous necrosis because granuloma can be either caseating or non-caseating, which we will discuss in another video. And now we'll continue the rest of this video in part two. Thank you.